I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we're all about unique design and architectural points of view and some truly surprising homes. We visit a tiered loft in Prospect Heights with crazy perspectives from every level. And architect Stephen Ehrlich takes us on a tour of a dream project, his very own home in Venice Beach, California. Designer Vanessa De Leon establishes a new bachelor pad aesthetic in Edgewater, New Jersey. Plus, Natalie Krayim shows us how she treaded the line between chic and comfortable in her own home. But first, Keith Baltimore brings a dramatic and eye-catching perspective to a new project in Manhasset. I wanted people to have this dramatic wow factor about like what's to come, kind of like the appetizer before a main course. <laughs> Welcome to Open House NYC. Today I'm coming to you from this amazing duplex on the Upper East Side. Check out this fun and airy great room overlooking Park Avenue. Isn't it just the perfect place to gather? This nearly 8,000 square foot apartment gives each space its own weight and identity in a classic New York way. Yet it feels fresh and modern every step of the way, both inside and out. Yes, out. It's got a massive private terrace, which just adds to the enviable entertaining spaces. And with six bedrooms, including a regal owner's suite, this Park Avenue Pearl is practically perfect. Let's get started with Keith Baltimore at one of his newest projects. Watch how he gave each space his own unique flair while incorporating his client's style, personality, and history. Hi, I'm Keith Baltimore, principal of the Baltimore Design Group in Long Island. Welcome to Manhasset. This project was a complete and total gut renovation. I think it turned out incredible. Can't wait to show it to you. Come on. As soon as you walk into this home, you're greeted by this octagonal rotunda. It's reminiscent of a Roman courtyard and the house branches off from here. But at the same time, I needed this space to have its own presence. I achieved that by using a textural snake skin flesh toned wallpaper, a center table, and a fantastic chandelier. I wanted people to have this dramatic wow factor about like what's to come, kind of like the appetizer before a main course. <laughs> The rotunda opens up into the living room. I really wanted this space almost to be like a reception space, a space where people would come in first, sit down, have a cocktail. The centerpiece of this room is obviously the fireplace, and I wanted the space to be very comfortable, so I used these deep sofas, very relaxed, very chill, and for some visual interest above the fireplace, I used my client's fabulous Americana Regency Plano Convex mirror. I'm an anthropological interior designer. It's not about what I want in the home, it's about using their pieces to create their own space. My clients had a lifelong collection of beautiful art, beautiful objects to encase all of these small objects. I bought these four curio cabinets that looked like they were theirs originally. Like the living room, the dining room is off the rotunda. So I needed to give it its own identity, its own juju of sorts. All the furniture in the dining room was from my client's previous home, but I needed to give it an updated feel. For instance, on these chairs, I had them done in a matte navy blue lacquer. Like a wide brush stroke on canvas, I took two different wallpapers, navy and flesh, and created this horizontal banding around the room. This gave me an opportunity to ground the space and allowed me to use this horizontal linear chandelier over the dining room table. This room is based on enjoying fine dining and wine and friends, but I really wanted them to have fun making that food. Come, let me show you. As I did throughout the home, the floors are all dark, but the moldings are all white, creating more delineated spaces. As in the kitchen here, I used white as a way for it to pop off the page. We see the horizontal line being mimicked that was in the dining room, and to highlight the horizontal line, I illuminated it along the kick line of the kitchen. By utilizing cylindrical LED fixtures in variable sizes, I created this constellation of sorts and makes it an interesting place to have a cup of coffee. So after years of being in their master bedroom, their furniture needed a little TLC, so I reupholstered some of the pieces, touched them up, I ombre the ceiling darker at the edges and lighter as it came up, giving it a more lofty appeal, almost as if it was a setting sun. 
And we have to talk about the additional carbon L piece in here, which reminded me of a Zen pose or a yoga pose of sorts to further exemplify this tranquil paradise. Because after all, this is their respite. This is the place that they come to relax. I'm so glad I had an opportunity to show you my anthropological approach to my client's home. It's very important to listen in interior design. Remember to mix it up, listen to yourselves, enjoy the process, and have fun. Coming up next, we are with designer Natalie Krayim at her own chic Brooklyn abode. We'll see you in just a bit. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now we're in Midwood, Brooklyn at the home of interior designer Natalie Krayim. Natalie allowed herself to experiment in her own family home, striking the perfect balance between comfort and opulence. Hi, I'm Natalie of Natalie Krayim Interiors, luxury interior design firm located here in New York. Today, I'm gonna take you on a tour of my own house located in the Midwood area of Brooklyn. In general, I tend to design in an eclectic and modern style, and I embrace it all throughout my house. And there was nothing to limit me other than my own imagination, which is boundless. It was very important to keep in mind that this will be the house where my husband and I will raise our three young children. A good foyer should always set the tone for the design of the rest of the house. Here, we change the floors and install porcelain slabs it looks like marble, but it doesn't require the high maintenance and care. We complement it with the vinyl wallpaper and some pop art to add fun and color. Every foyer needs a console table to drop your keys, but I took it as an opportunity to create a chic design moment. I custom designed this oversized mirror, wrapped it in cowhide and painted it with zebra stripes for some fun. And of course, a picture of my family because they are my greatest inspiration. The living room was a large space to begin with, so I had to make it cozy and intimate. These ebony floors make a great foundation for the furniture to stand out. I cover the chairs in a plush texture velvet and use a contrasting fabric for the seat. But of course, you need a focal point. And this focal point was the gas fireplace we installed. It's clad in floor-to-ceiling porcelain slats for a sleek and clean look. And because I wanted this living room to be great for entertaining, I can't forget to mention this 13-foot long bar. The wood veneer is just gorgeous, and we use chrome hardware for a bit of glamour. It's the perfect place for a drink before and after dinner. As an interior designer, I'm exposed to beautiful things every day. My new acquisition is this beautiful wall sculpture that depicts falling leaves in white and gold with a backdrop light. I couldn't let go of it, so I decided to bring it home. The dark wallpaper brings a sense of luxury to the space, and the walls consist a bit of drama. Lighting is so important in a room, and I used it here to mimic the soft glow of a candlelight. Now, let's take a look at the bedrooms. One of my favorite rooms of the house is my daughter's bedroom. When our third child was born, we had to add the crib and make some layout changes. I love the blue and white floral scheme that I created. The porcelain flowers on the wall are my favorite detail. The raw floral fabrics and wallpaper are so soothing and feminine. It's a perfect place for my two little girls to grow up. Now, let's go take a look at what I did with my bedroom. The whole bedroom is filled with light tones that add to the serenity. I wanted it to be cozy and serene to disconnect from the constant running around. I use an ivory metallic grasscloth wallpaper for the walls and ceiling. This makes it feel like a jewelry box. They say not to use ivory in home with kids, but rules are meant to be broken. I hope you enjoy touring our Brooklyn house. As you can see, you don't have to sacrifice beauty and elegance when you're designing for a family. Thank you so much for coming by. Coming back to the break, Vanessa DeLeon helps put the New Jersey design aesthetic on the map as she shows us around a secret agent-inspired bachelor pad right in Edgewater. We'll be right back.
watching Open House NYC. Designer Vanessa De Leon is one of New Jersey's most prominent interior designers. And though her client base is not limited to the Garden State, she has certainly helped create a design aesthetic influenced by its varied landscape and diverse people. She shows us around one of her newest projects, a hip and always surprising secret agent inspired bachelor pad right in Edgewater. Take a look. Hi, I'm interior designer Vanessa DeLeon and welcome to Edgewater on the Gold Coast of New Jersey. And right now is the perfect place to live and work. Because not only am I running my own design business, but I'm raising a family and my husband and I have two restaurants. The original Brownstone Diner is in Jersey City since 1968. And my husband and I have one in Edgewater and the newest one in Englewood Cliffs. But my heart definitely belongs to design. I just love creating beautiful and memorable spaces. And I'm all about putting New Jersey on the style map, which is good because there are many styles here as there are people. This is my home, for example. It's a glamorous take on family living. But my newest project is a complete contrast and I can't wait to show you around. For this client, I had to make a six-story townhouse the ultimate bachelor pad. And my theme had to be a reimagining of James Bond, because my client just loves that vibe. With six floors, I have a lot to show you, so let's get started. When you enter the home, the first space you walk into is the living room. This is where I established my monochromatic color scheme, which carries throughout the entire home. But I also wanted to establish this space with its own identity. It all started with this expansive fireplace, which I upholstered in suede, making it a sophisticated focus of the room. I then put up this rock wallpaper, which contrasts with the soft upholstery. And lighting was a big factor in my design. Despite these oversized windows, I imagined this room being used at night, with my well-dressed client and his friends having a drink. So I custom made the chandelier to mimic the coffered ceiling, both making a bold design statement and the most of the architectural detail. I finished the room off with a leather bench and a velvet sofa. Again contrast, but this time with a feminine and masculine element. And this rock coffee table echoes the wallpaper because contrast and consistency are hallmarks of my design. Because of the tiered setup on the main level, I treated the dining room like a stage. I put in this oversized wood table that can seat 12. Despite being a secret agent, my client has lots of friends. Though I use a monochromatic color scheme throughout the house, I'm not a slave to it. I upholstered these chairs in blue for a little pop. And I brought continuity to this floor plan with the drapes, which matched the ones in the living room. I had to use a partition for safety, but I used glass to keep the spaces connected. And when this fabulous dinner is complete, let me show you where my clients take his guests next. Normally, cigar rooms are shoved in the basement, but I didn't want to hide this one. And I put it close to the dining room so the flow of entertaining is never interrupted. I created a conversation area by putting these high back chairs around this low profile oval coffee table. And what goes better with a cigar than a glass of champagne? So I put this fabulous mirrored wine wall right next door. In here, I kept the walls dark and the artwork sexy. And not to keep it cut off from the rest of the house, I used these beautiful glass doors. Since this is a bachelor pad, I really wanted to give the master bedroom a masculine feel. So I installed a dark upholstered headboard and used dark furniture throughout. And I also wanted to take advantage of this breathtaking view. So I positioned the bed just so and used this tinted mirror to get the reflection. Again, I wanted the lighting to be over the top. So I installed this beautiful crystal chandelier and matching end table crystal lamps. For the master bath, it was all about the tub. So I put it on a raised platform and I lined the room in main marble, keeping with the monochromatic theme. Now I'm gonna show you something pretty cool. Welcome to the entertainment level. I really wanted to create a space where my client can wow his friends and himself. I reupholstered the fireplace wall to mimic what was going on downstairs, but I did it in a small scale. I installed these blue sofa and bar stools to echo the dining room chairs. As I said, I love continuity throughout my design. And I added a bit of glam with the pendants over the bar. I just wanted this space to be a perfect place for my client to finish with a nightcap. Thank you for taking a look at my secret Asian chic bachelor pad. See you soon. Well, I have seen a lot of bachelor pads. 
on this show, I should specify, and I've not seen one quite like that. <laughs> well, have you been inspired by anything on the show so far? If so, we have curated collections on Amazon so you can shop the look. Just visit amazon.com slash shop slash open house TV. Coming back to the break, we are in Venice Beach, California at an architect's own home. Welcome back. Now we're in Venice Beach, California at the home of architect Stephen Ehrlich. Stephen built his home using steel, wood, and concrete, and he created a unique and private urban sanctuary that's both sustainable and stylish. Hi, my name is Stephen Ehrlich. I am the founding partner of Ehrlich Yanai Reed Cheney Architects, and uh, I live here in this house that I designed almost 15 years ago. Let's take a look. One of the first things you see about this house is that there's a large exoskeleton, but it actually is an armature for shades, which I use for sun control. I've embraced using materials that actually weather and form a patina and are not painted or coated. So the rusted steel makes its own natural weathering process. The house is very much about how indoor space connects to outdoor space and how it fuses. In this great room, all of the materials that are on the exterior are brought inside. You've got the concrete block, you've got the steel, you've got hand burnished plaster. Overall, uh, it's a cohesive volume. The space can transform itself, the doors can open, it can extend into the outside. One of my favorite spots is standing on this glass bridge. This, is, in a way, is the power spot because you're floating within the larger volume of the great room, and it's a very dynamic and exciting place to be. The higher we go, the more privacy we have and the greater the views. The master bedroom is great because you're in amongst the trees. There's a beautiful outdoor terrace, and we can look down into the family court. And from this perch, I can see it all, I can feel it all, and I get a great sense of space on this property. Thank you for coming on this tour. I really enjoyed having you experience my vision of California contemporary modernism. Come again and see you next time. Coming back to the break, we are back in Brooklyn at the unique home of designer Jenny Kirshner. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we are in Prospect Heights, Brooklyn at the home of designer Jenny Kirshner. Jenny got renovated what was once a cavernous loft space with ceiling heights of nearly 30 feet into a stylish and inviting home. Watch how she subverted the notion of room dividers to create an airy and spacious tiered family home. Hi, I'm Jenny Kirshner. I'm an interior designer, and I'd like to welcome you to my beloved home here in Prospect Heights, Brooklyn. The space is about 2,000 square feet, but it feels so much larger because of the 30-foot ceilings and the multiple levels that we added. This is more than just my home. This is a place where I can bring clients to inspire them and show off my real design capabilities. Originally, when you came into the apartment, it was a big empty box but I wanted a real entry, so I created one. As a counterpoint to the sheer vastness of the apartment, I wanted the entry to feel warm and welcoming. I achieved that by selecting a dark textured wall covering and a rich walnut for the door casing. Through the entry, you pass this modern open kitchen. Perfectly positioned across from the kitchen is my children's playroom. It gives me the opportunity to interact with my kids while I'm cooking. It also gives them the opportunity to have their own space and to just be kids. And the glass lets bright light in, and it also allows me to keep a close eye on them. One of the challenges in designing this apartment was keeping the open feeling while still having defined areas. So I used glass walls all throughout this home. This room doubles as both my home office and a guest bedroom. When I have weekend guests, my desk pushes to the front of the room, the bed comes down, and the curtains close for privacy. With 30-foot ceilings, designing this living room may have been one of my greatest challenges. Where do you even begin in a space like this? 
I knew I wanted the walls to be art gallery white, but at the same time, I needed the space to feel grounded. Before we even closed on the apartment, I found this insane chandelier, and it totally anchors the entire apartment. It's almost as if the space and the chandelier were made for each other. Now, I never liked pink before, but when selecting this carpet, my then four-year-old daughter really loved the pink. So I threw in the towel. I discovered my newfound love of pink and introduced it into the rest of the house. I've always been very nostalgic and I love incorporating elements from my childhood into my home. I grew up sitting in these dining chairs, but of course I had to make them my own. In fact, they've been reupholstered five times. The staircase is the only original element of this space. Originally, they went straight up to the roof, but I took advantage of the 30-foot ceiling height by adding a second level. As you come up the stairs, you truly get a sense of how big the space is. But because of that, I wanted the bedrooms to feel cozy and intimate. I always believed that in order for design to feel authentic, it needs to be personal. And as with the dining room, nostalgia played a big role in my bedroom. The painting over our bed was actually hanging in the dining room of my parents' house. And the Turkish rug by my bedside was in their entry vestibule. My bed is one of my favorite pieces in the whole apartment. In keeping with my adoration for the unordinary, I love that it's not symmetrical. It adds an element of surprise into the room that throws you off just a little bit. Off the master bedroom, I created an interior balcony that overlooks the entire downstairs. It really adds to the openness of the apartment and I love being able to relax while also feeling like I'm part of the action down below. Overall, the balcony is a great place to sit, lounge, read a book, and have a drink. After all, the bar cart is also up there. This home was a real labor of love. And after so many years of designing for other clients, it allowed me to finally create my own dream space. And I hope you enjoyed taking a look at it with me. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?